Hi friends, in this lecture I am going to deal about the cross sections of spinal cord, only the cross sections, the gross and external features will be dealt in other lecture. So now in the cross section you will be seeing the grey matter, this total is grey matter as you know the spinal cord has outer white matter and inner grey matter. So this butterfly shaped thing is the inner grey matter. Whereas this outer part which covers the grey matter is the white matter. So now this round is the central canal of spinal cord. So now in the grey matter all the nuclei passes through the grey matter. But in the white matter all the tracts are present. In the grey matter all the nuclei. Our nuclei is nothing but the collection of neurons. Collection of cell bodies will be found in the uh, gray matter whereas in the white matter all the tracts are found so in the gray matter so first let's go and let's find out what are there in the gray matter so in the gray matter as you know this is the dorsal aspect and this is the ventral aspect so first I would like to first deal with ventral aspect in the ventral aspect there are so one minute let me show you ventral gray column has mainly three divisions one is lateral group other is central group and the next is medial group so first lateral group lateral group is of three divisions one is retro dorsal lateral other is dorsal lateral next is ventral lateral got it lateral group has three divisions let me show you in the diagram lateral group has three divisions retro dorsal lateral this is dorsal lateral and this is ventral lateral what is it retro dorsal lateral dorsal lateral this is ventral lateral Okay, all these three belong to the lateral group. Retro dorsal lateral, dorsal lateral, and ventral lateral. All these are nuclei. Retro dorsal lateral nuclei, dorsal lateral nuclei, and ventral lateral nuclei. All these belong to lateral group. And then the nuclei that belong to central group. There are two nuclei. Accessory nuclei and Phrenic nuclei. There are two nuclei. Accessory nuclei and phrenic nuclei. This is accessory nuclei and this is phrenic nuclei. All these two belong to central group. Okay. And then next is medial group. Medial group as a gain of two divisions one is dorsomedial and the other is ventromedial so I'm drawing two divisions dorsomedial and next is ventromedial so what is it this is dorsomedial this is ventromedial and this comes to medial group so all this is ventral gray column so ventral gray column has three divisions Lateral group, central group and medial group. Lateral group has three divisions. Retro dorsal, dorsal lateral and ventral lateral. Whereas central group has again three divisions. Accessory, accessory nucleus and phrenic nucleus. Whereas the medial group has again two divisions. Dorsal medial and dorsal lateral. Okay. Now comes the intermediate group. Okay, the intermediate group has two nuclei. One is intermedial medial, intermedial medial, and intermedial lateral. So what is it? Intermedial medial and intermedial lateral. So this is intermedial medial, and this is intermedial lateral. All these two are from intermediate zone. Okay. All these are nuclei, intermedial medial and intermediate lateral. All these two are from intermediate zone. Next is 
the next nuclei are for this uh, dorsal group gray column dorsal gray column has mainly three nuclei one is substantia gelatinosa this is substantia gelatinosa and then this big one is nucleus proprius and this is dorsal nucleus of vagus all these three are dorsal gray column so dorsal gray column has again three parts substantia gelatinosa nucleus proprius and dorsal nucleus of vagus and then above this substantia gelatinosa there is a small nucleus which is posterior marginal nucleus okay all these are the nucleus in the spinal cord which are present in the gray column and then these nuclei are divided into lamina which is laminar way of classification in laminar way of classification let me show you one two three four five six Seven, eight. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. This is ninth, and this is tenth. So what is this? First, second, third, fourth. All these are lamina. The first lamina corresponds to the posterior marginal nucleus. See here, the so first lamina corresponds to the posterior marginal nucleus. The second lamina corresponds to nuclear uh, substantia gelatinosa, whereas the third and fourth lamina corresponds to nucleus proprius. The fifth lamina corresponds to the neck of the gray column, and sixth nucleus corresponds to the base here, whereas the seventh nucleus corresponds to the intermediate gray matter. Eighth nucleus corresponds to the medial ventral horn nucleus. Ninth the lamina corresponds to the lateral uh, ventral horn nucleus mainly and the 10th lamina corresponds to the gray matter let me say you again the first lamina corresponds to posterior marginal nucleus the second lamina corresponds to substantia gelatinosa which is here whereas the third lamina corresponds to the nucleus proprius even fourth lamina corresponds to nucleus proprius and fifth lamina corresponds to the neck of the gray column which will be here and sixth lamina corresponds to the base and seventh lamina corresponds to this intermediate gray zone eighth lamina corresponds to the uh, medial horn nucleus whereas ninth lamina corresponds to the lateral ventral horn nucleus lateral horn nucleus and ventral horn nucleus all these are the lamina which are divided which in which the great matter of spinal cord is divided and then if you come to the okay all those what do we say tracts of spinal cord spinal cord has many tracts so let me show you let me draw you the cross section first this is the cross section and this is the mm -hmm. gray matter and the tracts are only present in white matter because tracts are nothing but the axons which pass through them so tracts mostly are present in the white matter so this spinal cord has many tracts so this is the dorsal part this is the ventral aspect so first we'll be dealing has this this side will be dealing ascending tracts 
and this side we'll be dealing with descending tracks. So ascending track first this is fasciculus gracilius and this is fasciculus cuneatius okay fasciculus gracilius and fasciculus cuneatius and this part is dorsolateral fasciculus and now this has two nuclei mainly first spinous and libellar nuclei are present these go from spinal cord to the cerebellum these take those impulses and everything to cerebellum so there are two spinocerebellar tracts one is dorsal spinocerebellar tract and the other here is ventral spinocerebellar tract okay and there will be a tract that is spinothalamic tract there again of two just like this this is anterior spinothalamic tract and this is sorry first lateral lateral spinothalamic tract and this is anterior spinothalamic tract and between them there is a tract that is spinotectal tract and here there will be spino olivary tract so now fasciculus gracilius fasciculus cuneatus Dorsolateral fasciculus, this is dorsal spinocerebellar tract, ventral spinocerebellar tract, and again the spinothalamic tract are true, anterior spinothalamic tract, lateral spinothalamic tract, anterior spinothalamic tract, and this is spinotectal tract, and this is spino olivary tract. All these are ascending tract. If you come to the descending tracts, so this is lateral corticospinal tract lateral corticospinal tract even there is an ventral corticospinal tract so here there will be so this is ventral corticospinal tract you can see this is lateral corticospinal tract this part is ventral corticospinal tract lateral corticospinal tract and ventral corticospinal tract and there are some small tracts this is olivospinal tract here there will be vestibulospinal tract and there will be tectospinal tract and a small tract here is rubrospinal tract so what are the spinal tracts these are descending tracts these come from the uh, cortex and different areas of the brain to the spinal cord so there will be lateral corticospinal tract and ventral corticospinal tract corticospinal tracts are of two types lateral corticospinal tract and ventral corticospinal tract and there will be a rubro spinal tract olivospinal tract vestibulospinal tract and tectospinal tract and tectospinal tract vestibulo and tecto they both will be like this so all these are the descending tracts that are present in the cross section of spinal cord what are the ascending tracts fasciculus gracilius fasciculus cuneatus dorsal lateral fasciculus dorsal spinocerebellar tract and ventral spinocerebellar tract lateral spinothalamic tract anterior spinothalamic tract in between them there will be spinotectal tract and here it is spino olivary tract and the later i mean and on the descending tracts are lateral corticospinal tract ventral corticospinal tract and this is rubrospinothalamic tract olivospinal uh, uh, tract vestibulospinal tract and tectospinal tract all these are the ascending and descending tracts that we can see in the cross section of spinal cord okay then i